First time in podcast history of all podcasts that have ever existed in the entirety of podcasts that people are doing back to back episodes after doing a three hour and twenty minute episode. Now none of that is true. Um, <laughs> Might be true. You don't know. know. It could be. Sounds feasible. I'm sure some people record multiple podcasts in a day. So oh, like just they just crank them out so they're like ready. You know, like you go on a yeah. trip and it's already there. We can't do that, can we? We have ours is more topical. Ours is more exactly about you know upcoming subject matters. We can't just predict the future at all times. I think our guest based stuff is a bit more timeless, right? Because we speak more about them as like people and their origin stories, as Yanko likes to put it. So those, uh, I, I don't think they're completely evergreen, but they have more of an element of that than this, which we have to talk about what's happening or what's happened and what's going to happen. Uh, I was putting a bit of thought into today's episode and, and what we could talk about or how we could talk about it. And we didn't finish talking about all of the playoff teams. So I think what we could do is use the framing of uh, Cheng Du or maybe Cheng Don'ts because hey. oh, yeah. uh, uh, of what's going to happen as we, we round the corner, right? So we can take a look at the teams who are going to be in attendance at Cheng Du from the playoffs of the major and the ones who aren't and then what the future kind of holds for them, right? So like... I was thinking, unless we do, we do we have any uh, general chit chat that we would like to get out guess, of the way? I guess the only thing that I could that, that we didn't exactly touch on, which we don't even have to touch on if we don't want to, would be the James situation. I don't even know if there's any more that needs to be said about that that hasn't already been said. Well, Jason, I, you better give it your two cents because if you don't say it, someone will call you out for not saying something. So, what do you have to say about well, it? I said it on the major episode. Like, it's just I don't know. I don't, there's, I don't know really what to say. Like, it's it's one of those things that happened, and you just have to play with it. And that's just the fucking sport we live in, and all we can do. The rules are set up so you you can't reset the round in that situation. We don't have the technology, as Major said, nor do I actually think it would be a good idea to be able to just start a round from like the 45 second mark and just play it over. Um, so, I mean, it sucks, but I mean, these situations do arise and they always will arise. Technology sometimes has these crashes and I don't know, it's just, it's a fucking bummer, but I don't, I don't see what could have been done differently to, to make it, you know, to, to make so, make it so everyone's happy in that scenario. Get I mean, the proper that, PCs so they don't crash. <laughs> they, they, had, they had pretty legit PCs there. That's not yeah, I man. The lie. hardware the was, P- but it depends. Like uh, it's but not, was it's it, more of a CS? I was it just say it's not all. It's not all about the processor and the GPU, right? Like there's a lot of fine tuning those PCs, right? Where things are not supposed to go wrong. But listen, I'm not gonna. You know, I was like memeing, half memeing there. You know, sometimes something can break. Like it is tech stuff, right? Like could be some random thing that happened, something that wasn't maybe uh, updated, that was supposed to be auto-updated, whatever. I just want to get that one thing out of the CS. way. Is like the only, there's nothing that you can do. There's no like, oh yeah, let's restart the round from that point because it sort of loses its, you know, it's not the same round anymore. Even if you restart How do you even it, set it right? up? Right, like, the, yeah, yeah, like you have... Maybe you know the players' positions. People can talk it through. I don't know. I, I just don't think it's viable. It's obviously a horrible moment for something like that to happen. Um, we've had a couple of those. Not at the major, I don't think, but there was that one time for Dupree in a big game, for Cold Zera also in a big game that happened. I yeah. think both of those were on Mirage. You know, So there's been examples of that. It's super unfortunate. VP would most likely end up winning the game. And and uh, if they won that round, I mean, first they would have probably won that round with Jane posted up there with the op, and then G 2s economy would have been shot. So they had a very good chance of winning the game and eliminating G two and making the playoffs. And then who knows what would have happened in that bracket? But you know, I think no one here is. I don't think anyone reasonable is like not feeling bad for VP or. You know, it's just, I don't think anything else could have done, uh, could have been done. Like, the rules are kind of clear if damage has been. And that's exactly for the reason. So you can't speculate in all this shit. So it's a very simple rule. Like, if there's no damage done, then sure, you can restart the round. 
Uh, but yeah. if there's damage done, then obviously... It's know. also so you can't just boot your computer while it's under the desk if you find yourself in a less than favorable position yeah. and then your PC restarts and it's, oh, okay, well, sure, we, we have to restart this round now because I... Right, like the... the which, which I know that that seems like a nefarious angle, but... In well, the history of Counter-Strike, once upon a time, yes, indeed. Back in the day, we had the rule of if there's a technical issue in the first three rounds, you restart the game. Not in the yeah. first round. You restart the whole yeah. game because you didn't have match medics to restart and rounds. Pista was right? that influential. Like in yeah. 1.6, that was the only thing. Uh, could have we, ha- we had to do it occasionally, even in the early CSGO days. Like We had to do it in Source 1.6. Like If there were like big crashes or the server died, you'd have to come back in and go, okay, well, what was the score? How much money are we going to give you? How much money are we going to give the other team? Right, That would actually happen. Like you, The admin would have to like set, okay, uh, MP underscore start money, we'll set it for you guys as 8K, and then you guys can join and we'll set it for 5K for you guys, and then you just go and like you just have to I deal mean, with some of those dude, scenarios. We've seen where an admin's gone back watching the demo and be like, all right, this round, you buy an MP5, you buy an M4, you buy a you know, nade and two flashbangs, you kill you, you kill you with this weapon, and like, yeah, it, it, we've had it go down, like break yeah. down to like details, like ridiculous levels of detail. I've actually been a part of that before in CSGO. We're like, we've looked at the kill feed and you've gone through, and, and the thing is, when those scenarios happen, if you're worth your salt as a player or a human being, you're going to be completely honest about it and just go through the scenario of, yeah, he killed me with this and I did this. Like, just so, because nobody wants those things to ever crop up. You just want to get back underway with the game, right? Uh, so I think that the reason that this one here stings a lot is because of the context of the scenario and what could have, should have, if maybe, you know, what the horizon could have been. And then I think that a bit of the rigmarole that followed uh, in terms of the fact that everybody was like, oh, no, this fucking sucks for VP, their heart sinks. Then some of the reactions, I think, like Hooksy, you know, yelling, uh, I can understand why he's celebrating, but, you know, I think it just left a bad taste in the mouth. And then some of the tweets felt like they were a bit double downy. Um, you know, like it was it was G2, obviously, were, were happy to get through. Did but it leave a I, bad taste I, in your mouth? I just think that, uh, you know, if you made those same kind of comments a day or two later, it's probably fine. But I just think in that situation, you could have just played the humility card and just re- you not said anything because anything that you do that's seen as like over celebrating the scenario is just going to add fuel to the fire. Sure. Even though I'm on board with the thing that there's nothing that could have been done, I'm just in the position of that really sucks for VP. So from like an optics standpoint, if I was playing tactical social oh, media absolutely. PR chess, it'd be just don't say anything just fucking would let you it, would let you celebrate would you celebrate on winning that game would you not c- like hooks he did okay <laughs> sure well i think the problem with that is you know g2 has been through a lot when it comes to majors right they didn't make playoffs at paris they didn't make rio before that and then that context Antwerp, doesn't matter Antwerp, for me. well he wasn't part of antwerp but so it's i think it's just it felt so relieving for them that they made it so at that first moment as you've just won the game like you're not really thinking about what happened on inferno you're thinking about you still you got it done on anubis and you fucking made the playoffs right because that was the bare minimum that i think everyone expected from them including themselves right so i think it's a little bit unfair to judge them and also then people talk about monesi and his interview i mean he's a kid man like he's i like i don't think i don't think he meant like when he said about vp like that you know the the crash didn't play a role at all i think he just feels like in the end they they managed to get the upper hand i don't think anyone in g2 is like under the impression that it wasn't an you know incredible hell fortunate scenario that crash yeah. Yeah, incredibly fortunate that what happened to them and unfortunate for vp you know yeah, but I think that's a, this is a nice leap off point for what I brought up at the start, like for us to be able to get into IEM Chengdu and using the residuals of the playoffs to talk about teams who are going to be in attendance in Chengdu and VP are one of the teams, not from the playoffs, who are actually going to be in attendance at Chengdu. I can just launch through the list and then we can talk about VP and talk about their chances uh, in the event. We got FaZe, G2, Maus, Cloud9, VP, Heroic, Furia, Monty, Astralis, Linvision, Liquid, FlyQuest, Namiga, Wildcard, 9Z, and Tai Lu. That's the 16 teams in attendance and then they're broken up into two groups group a is g2 versus 9z liquid versus heroic fury versus lin vision tyler versus mouse and group b is phase versus namiga monty versus Astralis, cloud nine versus FlyQuest, and wild card versus vp so we can talk about i guess vp's chances in this side of the bracket because um i don't think vp are a bad team at all they're one of these teams that goes into almost every event as I, I, is that is dark horse the right term 
I don't even know because I know I know what you're trying to get at because it's the same thing for me. But like, I don't know if they can be a dark horse as like because they're like kind of I guess a known quantity. I think dark horses for that team that you just don't really expect to burn through the bracket. That like, but like, Virtus Pro always has that feeling to them, and like, no matter what they look like in terms of individual level, it always feels like their play style elevates them to, you know, a top four contender of, of pretty much every event. Yeah, so maybe Dark Horse isn't. It's not the, the right, right one, but I don't know what what would be. What's the right horse for this situation? I don't know. I've never ridden a horse. I've ridden a couple, <laughs> but not like any. I got of like bitten by a horse core. once. What, really. Yeah, yeah, I made a, a picture one time of Yanka getting bitten by a horse. <laughs> oh, damn. You know, Anders is definitely yeah. afraid of horses as well. Well, what we could do is we could scare the three of you, put you all in a room. We get a horse with its teeth bare. So Anders is scared, Yanko's scared, and we put a clown on top of it. And then Jason's that's, freaking the fuck out. That's not cool, dude. That, that's too much. You've crossed a line with that one. Well, like, uh, you know, it, it could be fun. It, it'd be a, up, a, bro. a rodeo of laughs. Yeah, maybe for you. No. Yeah. Yeah. I, well, look, I, I'm just afraid of sharks. <laughs> okay. That makes and, sense. And um, the future. Yeah. yeah. Sharks, um, sharks. I don't are know. Cool. I think for them, it's just, I don't think they're back at the level uh, at which they were in Rio. Like, as a team, there's still not enough versatility. Their map pool is not as strong. So I think they're, they're definitely in a position where they can cause an upset. Like, they can absolutely make the playoffs, beat a good team in the playoffs. But I don't think they have enough consistency and depth to be able to you know beat multiple good teams on the way of lifting a trophy um also from that period you know some people have been switching roles like fame has different roles and and has been doing different stuff uh so you know it's like it's it's not as simple as it's not like outsiders and it's just mirror instead of kicker like there's more change to it so i think they'll still be needing some more time um, before they get into that real contender status, they looked they looked pretty uh, awful in their opening games at the major. Well, the, this is the thing. I, I guess overall, because we talk about them as one of the hardest teams to put away, right? That that keeps their head above water in a lot of these deep conversations. So you look at the group that they're in, and Phase is the biggest name in the group. But then you have to start talking about the context of them losing another grand final. They probably haven't gone back in the server to practice this week. Right, they've probably taken the time off and just go. We'll just go into China and play. And I know people won't like hearing that, and that might not even be true. Maybe they are practicing, but I would say if I was in their position, I would have definitely taken the first couple of days of returning from the major off. And the fact that they're going to have to travel at a similar time as to what Yanko and I are, aka tomorrow. We're talking. Once you get home on Monday, you're home for Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. One of those days, you're just going to sit on the couch and be emo that you just lost the major grand final where you were the favorites after sure. taking down Spirit and Vitality. The next day, you're going to do some laundry and stare blankly into the washing machine as you think about what could have been. <laughs> and the third day, you're going to go, oh, for fuck's sake, I've got to go to another Counter-Strike event all and the start way to packing China. your bag. Yeah, it's a long travel day. So I, I actually feel that I'm confident in saying that FaZe are probably just going to not do anything in preparation yeah, I, for this event. I, I, I want to phrase it like this way, okay? I, I still want to uh, touch on the major a little bit when it comes to yeah, phase, especially, yeah, right? Yeah. Because what happened? Like, phase plays spirit, right? Two of the biggest favorites probably in the uh, for the trophy in the quarterfinal, right? And then there's that whole crazy thing with um, phase letting Vertigo through in the first phase and then letting it again in the second phase, uh, right? Like them removing Anubis, which felt weird a little bit because... You wouldn't think that would have been Spirit's pick regardless. You know, like their picks would have been either Ancient or Mirage, right? Which it ended up being uh, Mirage. And okay, FaZe takes their map pick, goes to FaZe's pick, Spirit wins in overtime. And then even in the second phase, I hate this, FaZe is removing overpass, right? FaZe, FaZe. Um, and then between Ancient and, and, and Vertigo, Spirit goes for Vertigo. I think this was like a really interesting sort of map well, Kagan left the bait didn't he yes but i think this is one of those where the result sort of bails out the veto a little bit and i guess the problem is like i don't know what to believe because 
initially like you know frozen's reaction was they're not super prepared on it then on on the desk kerrigan of course who's also better at playing those games says like they they prepared for it heavily for this game then neo in another interview says they played 20 plus vertigos <clears throat> and when you look at phases games at the major like they played anubis as well and overpass like they've even let Vertigo through in the series against Imperial, who also plays Vertigo, but they didn't end up picking it, so Phase vetoed it in the second phase. So it's like, what does their map pool really look like? You think they're you know? just playing like the hardcore metagame? They're like, all right, you say we didn't practice it, we just came in and pugged. You but say we practiced it well enough for Spirit, and you say we practiced it for everybody 20 times later, and now nobody <laughs> fucking knows. But here's the thing, right? Like, I think I even said this on Maui's stream while we were watching this Vertigo game between FaZe and Spirit. Like, I don't necessarily... I don't think it was, like, a, a good idea for Kerrigan to let... Vert to... to Floated. remove overpass in the end right because i don't think spirit goes for overpass i think they go for ancient if it's between ancient and overpass i think they get ancient and phases ancient has been historically like really good in cs2 definitely better than their overpass right and vertigo has been their permaban even though they have been practicing it or whatever and sure you can say you you they've definitely prepared against spirit if they were going to let it through in the first phase in case it comes as a punish there but if they don't call your bluff in the first phase then you shouldn't like let it go through the second phase and sure they win in overtime but it's a game in which they win both pistols right they had a 7-0 run on the ct side the spirit players were you know choking a little bit and losing some rounds with advantages even in overtime i know chad you touched on zontix as well he i i, I had the same comment while while watching the game like it was a couple of you know straight strange uh decisions from him so it could have definitely like backfired and in that case i think he would have been getting a lot of flack because at the end of the day what is phase's team and their lineup right it's super experienced players all proven players right stage players championship caliber players it's like are you really that afraid of the spirit lineup that you're going to go on a map that's weak for them that's your perma ban instead of just like facing them on ancient which you know okay it's a really good map for for spirit but also don't you trust your players enough to be able to to battle them well what do you think about this framing though yanka because i i'm with what you're saying right the experience of that team is is one of the positives or one of the main things that they should look to using but when you think about the scenario and i, I know that the playbook came back to bite them in the ass uh, in the tail end of that game. They just ran out of ideas and options, right? And when you're not as well-versed on the map, you're going to struggle to make the right like seesaw maneuvers and, and whatnot as the game progresses. And there was a good comeback from Spirit. But they, they put Spirit somewhere where they were uncomfortable. Not the map of Vertigo, but going up against FaZe on Vertigo. They didn't know, like early in the game, and this is why FaZe were able to get up to a lead, at least in my opinion, is because I think Spirit went, well, fuck it. Like, let's go aggressive and set the tone and then they got shut down and like i think spirit win that game if chopper wins the 1v1 on the pistol round against carrigan the first yeah. round of the game it's a whole different it's a whole different game if that happens but because phase got to set the tone early it shook spirit so phase experienced on the stage right experienced with taking some of these weird gambits before i'm not saying that they were necessarily comfortable but they're in a position men mentally where they can overcome that discomfort probably better than uh the spirit guys and zontix obviously had a rough one it turns out he he was sick um Kassad felt the need to send me a uh a, a message saying that he had a 39 degree fever the next day it's like okay cool thanks Kassad. i'm glad that you you messaged me that um <laughs> Kassad but, or yeah. zontix had the fever uh well maybe Kassad did as well <laughs> but he messaged me saying that zontix had a fever um so like i i guess from that situation they've both gone out in deep water right it's just one of them is going to be calmer yeah. in that situation well, Kerrigan, and also Kerrigan, for me this is like the go ahead chase kerrigan mentioned on the desk after the game he was really surprised that like spirit played it so cautiously he, he was like, he said he was really, really surprised that they weren't like challenging at a ramp with any kind of pace in the first like six Well, they did first rounds. gun round and they got owned. This is what Kerrigan told me. I, I mean, he just mentioned like, he was like, I am surprised that when you pick this map, like if, if you can't hold a ramp, like you just lose the map on CT. Like if you can't actually stop that. So he expected Spirit to be like way more aggressive, way con more consistent up a ramp. Because I asked him specifically, is there anything in your prep for this map that you were surprised that Spirit did or caught you off guard that they didn't do or like was not going according to 
to plan. And he was just like, basically, the fact that they were like so slow and kind of cautious at a ramp for the majority of that, of that first half was was like, it gave us a lot of room to work with. And it never really tested our initial aid defense. Um, and I mean, mm. I guess, I, I mean, it worked out well. Kerrigan had a sick game as well, by the way. Like the, the kills he was getting on short at A was, was fucking mental on that Yeah, and side. also on the CT side of, of Vertigo, you know, Shiro was the lowest rated player, only 10 and 10, and he wasn't picking up the op a little bit even when he had the money for it, which, you know, felt like it could be really strong with phases. Li not limited utility usage, but, you know, it's not going to be perfect. Yes, uh, for yeah. them, they the were missing they... Util and mid when uh, they were trying to take control. You yeah, know, yeah. all that stuff. So a lot of things had to go right for FaZe to win this game, and they did, and that's fine. And this is the least problematic one for me. You know, this is more of a lead-up to what happened later in the tournament. In right? the final? Yes, especially in the final. I mean, then they again, they let, it, they let Vertigo through in the semifinal. I think they're just done with their Anubis. I think that's the feel I have, that that's going to be their permaban except for... You know, teams who don't play it or teams who they don't think will pick it. Like, I don't think they like their Anubis. Problem is, they probably don't like their overpass either, but it's like pick your poison. And they probably felt better on Vertigo. And I mean, then they got absolutely pummeled by Vitality um, in the in the semifinal, right? But fortunately, they won their own map pick. Then it went to Inferno and they close out the series like pretty comfortably, right? But then you get to the grand final right against navi and for some reason they don't pick nuke they pick ancient over nuke okay like what's the reason for that but it's this i think like it's the same thing as what with g2 is the third map yeah, anchor but, because everybody thought it was a weakness for navi yeah but i think you know obviously the g2 one got a lot of spotlight on it because of me and kasad and whoever else was, you know, piling on on them, right? But then when the final happened, all of this happened, I think also a little bit because of the quarterfinal veto against Spirit and just, you know, Kerrigan's run and in and, and general, like, it wasn't talked as much, but I think it was, like, probably equally egregious in a sense, right? Like, f just for me, for a, from a philosophical standpoint, right? Because I don't even... You look at it, it's just, you, I just look at like if it were my team, you know, like if, if I was on phase, as if, if I was on G2 talking about yesterday and when we, when we discussed the topic, right? It's like I have my players who are, this is where they thrive, right? Like this is where they're at their best. We played the uh, Nuke 2 Town, okay, they lost to Spirit in a close game, but they absolutely destroyed Vitality on it, right? You're going up against Navi, okay, it's a good map for them. But again, you're taking it somewhere else where it ended up biting them in the ass, right? They lose their own map pick. They go to Mirage. They absolutely destroy Navi. It was 13-2, and then they get, you know, destroyed on, on Inferno themselves. But it's another one of those things where compared to the amount of, you know, attention, the, the, the G2 one... And I don't think it's mirror situations. You know, for example, I do think FaZe has more depth to their map pool than... G2 has, I think they're at a, they were better in a better spot as a team than G2 was. I mean, they made every single final, you know, in CS2. So I don't think it's exactly the same, but I think it's definitely something where you can look and say, oof. Like, if he was cooking in the quarterfinal, he was fucking not doing it in the final. Yeah. For, for me, it's, it's more like how they rolled over on map three, which is almost the same as how they rolled over on map three in the best of five against Spirit. They like uh, uh, it. Like I, I feel the team because if we're attesting, you know, the fact that they're big, big game players and they're comfortable on the stage in this, then I, I would expect them to have the gas in the tank to be able to stay mentally composed or have the plays possible to get into the game, right? And I don't want to take away from Navi owning them. I don't want to take away from Spirit owning them either. But that's where I would expect a team of Phases caliber to be able to maybe not necessarily go blow for blow, but to be able to bail themselves out of a tough game. Like, they even got to start T-side of Inferno, right? I know Bit just fucking mauled them. Like, a great map three performance. You, you have to look at him. I think it was like 130 plus ADR or whatever. He just fucking Dude, went nuts J on it. JL him. had the same stats, essentially. Two less kills. 15 and 5 to 17 and 5. 127 ADR for both. 
like so they both just and one was on a and one's on b i think the map was just like shut down (laughs) you know like but a part of that is is to do with phase not throwing anything back right sure and that's uh, when they played against spirit on overpass they started t-side overpass which is harder but they started t-side inferno which i think the map stats for the event had inferno being more ct biased than t biased but i would say recent history would have inferno as a little bit more of a t map so it's just surprising to not see them on a map that should be a bit more of a comfort you're on the t side you can control the pace and the tempo of the game like of the rounds and they just got fucking blown out and then when they rolled over towards the ct side they had no option they lose pistol they force and then there's not enough rounds they have to force out the rest of the games like literally the worst position they could possibly have found themselves in um come that map three it just felt to me like they they didn't have anything going for them at all and that that's a worry this is going to sound like ass too and i hate myself for saying it but (laughs) phases run hurt them a little bit in a sense of they overconfident spirit and vitality yeah. right like they got rid of the two of the biggest dogs like vitality beat them in how many games prior to that semi-final and in a couple of grand finals too you know spirit obviously beat them a co- two times in, in katowice in the final and then in a best of three in the groups you know they were the biggest favorite the hottest team coming into the major and you beat all those teams and listen i'm guaranteeing you phase before the final is saying hey we can't let up. We can't be relaxed. You know, this is a good team. Absolutely, they're saying that. Um, but I don't think they expected the type of a fight that Navi put up in the approach from Navi, which is where you give props to Navi squad, right? And blame and, and Alexi for the planning and all the players for executing, right? Because their plan was to get in phases face and like, don't let them breathe. And of course, it didn't, you know, work out on Mirage, but across the series... You know, they did a pretty good job and, and the players stepped up and delivered a bit, especially in the final, who's been quiet throughout the tournament. But I think that was like a little bit for FaZe. You know, it's it, it's just kind of where you, you're you're seeing it almost, like you're seeing your run, like you, you got rid of the biggest threats and now it's like this Navi team, which is a good team, man, but we, we have them, you know, like it's, this is our, our final, you know, we're going to be lifting that trophy and then Navi just came out swinging. So if we if we take a look at phase then like directly at Chengdu this group stage is this going to be like a similar group stage of like limping through it and turning oh. it on for the playoffs oh. they have a pretty easy opening match oh, oh bro I absolutely agree with Chad unfortunately right like I think oh, sure. phase probably hasn't practiced at all um, and they're going to come into the tournament best you know, of one against Namiga obviously <laughs> wanting to do the best no I think they'll they'll beat Namiga and then they play winner of Monty Astralis, Astralis. Astralis you know like. Yeah. They can make the playoffs, and and the funniest thing is, if, if they get into the playoffs, then you have that extra adrenaline carrying you on. But I think it's definitely going to still be in their heads, right? I mean, they were so close, right, and they ended up losing to to Navi, who's coming out of nowhere, right, in that grand final almost, and that that was like you know for guys like Crane and Carrigan, especially who are getting up there. I mean, that was such a massive opportunity to add one more major yeah to their tally so you know they're not going to be in it a hundred percent no matter how much they want to and they definitely want to you know like no one's no one's taking tournaments off um especially because i think each player on that team has been on top and has been you know (laughs) not on on top so so you know (laughs) yeah well so so you know that it's not gonna last forever, like the good form or the good team and the and and whatever it is, right? Like what you have right now, and you have to take advantage of it while you can. So I think, oh yeah, Vitality isn't here. So I was going to say like Vitality would probably be one of those teams, but um, mm, Spirit is not there either. Shit. Yeah, it might yeah, be, it's a big, it's a big no yeah, Navi. Either, big competition. Yeah, no Man, Navi. Like, the there, there's plenty, because I was going to say, for example, Spirit would probably just end up winning the whole thing because for spirit like yes they're the 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 hottest team coming into the major but they're also a young team like young players uh, they've only been together for three months since shiro joined the lineup right so yes of course you want to win it and you've been in great form but it's not the end of the world right like there's no reason for them to change anything or just keep doing what you're doing. Yeah, keep they just keep improving. plugging away. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. And I think like they're definitely going to be a contender at which you know each tournament that they uh, attend. 
we need I need to make a quick uh, a quick sidebar just uh, just briefly uh, to get the the test from the two of you of how inflammatory this uh, Reddit headline is. Here we go. The anti cheat is the number one priority for Valve at the moment, according to Moses and Sponge's <laughs> distinct impressions from speaking with Valve devs at the major via Talking Counter, Counter episode eighty six. Jason, how do you feel about that headline? I'm I'm glad they included a distinct impression. In that but everyone stopped reading after the anti cheat is the number one priority for Valve at the moment, according to Moses and Sponge. God, they stopped reading after we did, that. We did everything th- we could. We did everything we could. Okay. Well, I feel that they, I don't. I, if it, yeah, fuck. If people <laughs> listen to it, but no one's going to listen to it. They're just going to read the headline and start talking about it for fuck's sake. Uh, someone in the chat, someone in the comments, put the exact timestamp for the anti cheat discussion. No one's listening to that shit. I don't think anyone's going to click on it. No Someone gonna, will. Nah, bro. Someone will. No one people will. have plenty of free time. It's it's you not reckon? it's not as bad as it could have been, Chad. It's not as bad as it could have been. That's that's what I'm gonna cling on to. M- Moses, the puppet for Valve, yeah. tries to placate the community by saying that the anti cheat will be fixed in the next few days. That's what the headline could have read. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it could have read. It didn't it read that. It could have been way worse. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Okay. Well, also, sorry, I didn't mean to sidebar. No, it's fine. Before we move on, I'll continue the sidebar and just say, Jason, great job on the fucking intro, the song, and everything, oh, thanks, and adding, that's what I adding the thing. I, I think the intro will be pretty sick. I think it works really well. I, I really like it. I'm going to add a little, little frag uh, movie feel to it. Yeah, make a little longer today. Might add a couple seconds onto it, and uh, we'll see how that one tastes when it, when it comes out. Well, second All question right. Did you do the Vitality Phase game? Me? At the major, yeah. Uh no, I I did not know. No, yeah, that was, was a was that was a, that was a morning game. I think the later that night was Navi four p.m. Yeah, game. Navi morning G2 game. Was, yeah, it was a morning Navi game. Navi G two was the second game. <laughs> I was just yeah. wondering, you know, what uh, the thoughts on Zaibu like? Well, at this Shit, point, man. it's getting a bit tough, isn't it? Yeah, that. I mean, he I, he never got into the swing of this event like whatsoever. I think the hard part is it's like the same feeling. I like I just I can't even really recall like a round where he had like any kind of like really cool impact. I know it but, just it just kind of like built back to like some thoughts I've always had on Zaiwu where it's like it's like you know at the end of CS:GO hands down he was he was the number one player, um, the best player. But I think my my issue with Zaiwu has always been um, you know and this has been framed a couple of different ways over the years with different levels of criticism. But my feeling has always been like he doesn't have have that gear like other number one players have in the past where he's just like i'm not letting us lose this game you know like he doesn't have that gear where like he starts actively making plays and actively trying to work his way into the game and actively like exerting influence on the map the way like you know simple obviously if he's if he's in that mood like he's going to make plays and get himself involved in the action and he's going to call plays to activate for him and there were certain times because i was watching i was watching some vitality games with maniac throughout the event um and him and i were discussing it you know pretty pretty openly and pretty and and it was just like you'd see him like setting flame up to like make plays you'd see him like throwing flashes for flames and other people's and at some point it's like bro take a round for yourself like you have the op like call call something for your have flames fa- flash for you so you can go get a pick and that's always been my issue with with Zaiwu. and i think it was like pr- really apparent at this event where for whatever reason he just wasn't in the groove where it's just like you be a little bit more selfish like take over this fucking game take over a round or two to get your team back into the swing of things and see what happens from there and it just it never fucking came this whole event but that's not the player we're talking about though is it and when you hear it from them it's like yeah we need to like play as a team and win as a team and they they don't I, I kind of yeah, agree with the general sentiment. Argument. I hate that argument. Well, yeah, especially if you have a star driver within the team, right? So if we want to talk about Zywu like he's, you know, the, the best player in the world, then he's expected to deliver at that capacity, right? That comes with the territory. Um, so that that for me is is where the conversation gets a little bit, uh, not like into into the weeds but it's just like he, he's obviously not playing like that and those are the most important games right those are the ones where you would like to see him be able to to set the tempo and control a match at counter-strike but uh if uh, like the the team overall doesn't use their pieces um in the traditional way to get the most out of their bigger fraggers anyway right like they have 
players playing anchor positions. They have Dan who plays more map control positions or info gathering positions on the CT side where um, I guess he is an in-game leader and I don't, I don't fault him for this, but he's an in-game leader feels that he can call better from those positions. I'd imagine like connector on Mirage is a good example. Like outside on nuke is another example. Um, so, you know, when you're not, when you're not doing it in the traditional sense where you're putting like your strongest aimers or, you know, some of your players who are going to react best in those scenarios to get, then they're already built different right and i'm not using that as an excuse for them i'm just saying that they're they're not using the same blueprint as what other teams in their type of positions do like i guess who's a good example uh g2 or um there's another one that i'm missing right now of the fucking tippy top of my tongue uh phase Mm. right think about the way that they use carrigan think about the ways that they use hooksy like even snappy Right, is another good example, right? He's going to play some more of these positions where he's going to just have to sit there and uh, eat shit like jump slotting B or whatever or, you know, pushing into dark on um, uh, on Anubis and, you know, he's maybe going to get, he's only got a Mac 10 or some oh, shit, but he's just in there to get control. Shit. I guess, I guess, I guess I have a question for you two in this, in the, on this topic would be like, cause Chad, you've been an in-game leader and, and Yanko, you've, you have a little, you, you are more strategic than I I've am. I've also when, been when you one about too. Things and, you know, that's and you've fine. been an in-game leader. Shut up. Um, but like, if you're, if you're in a tournament like this, like, I guess like up to this point, right? Like flames, like in, in to credit to vitality flames had the hot hand. Like he single-handedly won matches. Like he, he like, he was the well, primary was reason they the beat group complexity. Stage, so he needed to. Yeah. yeah. But like, are you, are you actually, when you go into matches and like you have a tournament where flames is going nuts and Zywu has been a little bit quiet and out of it. Are you trying to get Zywu involved or are you playing to the fucking hot hand and the player who's having the excellent tournament? Like, I guess that would be... I think they're just playing. I don't think that they're thinking about what you're saying. Like, I don't think they're going out there actively trying to play to one of the player's strengths or whatever, right? They're going to sit, they're going to do their game plan, they're going to decide how they want to approach the match and they're just going to go about that. And then whoever's finding that impact is just going to be by virtue of the game plan, right? And 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 if the way into rounds doesn't work then that's when you need to turn to your individuals to bow you out that's when you would love to see zywu when they've lost the two opening kills be able to rock up and you know bring them two back and turn it into a three on three or him and spinks in a 2v4 situation being able to clutch out a round i don't think that like they're going into it going oh we need to set up these type of players but if you were going to go in and send someone as a driver to get him activated then zywu would be the one to try and do that right because he plays the most influential weapon uh within the game however him in terms of an AWPer, and this is the conversation that persists, is you compare him to Monacy, for example, and you look at the amount of kills he has with the AWP out of uh, the overall distribution. It's, I think Zywu's like around 30% and Monacy's more like 40%, right? So there's, and, and that I'm just, I would have to double check. Like that's just off the top of my head. I'd have to go and double check the stats from the major. Um, but I don't even think that the, the, it gives more flexibility to Apex to be able to call knowing that Zywu doesn't always just need the AWP. But then when you're talking about the scenario that you are, it removes that to be able to not rely on that, but lean on it because you're not, he's not, it's not that he's not practiced with it, but he's not just constantly having that as the, the big weapon to fucking swat him away. So uh, look, Vitality for me is a bit of an anomaly. I, I don't I don't know how I feel about this Mezzi edition. And that's not because of Mezzi. That's because of the way that the team is comprised and the way that they approach the game. Like I, I It just feels a little bit off to me, but they're still able to compete because they have a lot of good players. So... Uh, they, they, and this is the way that they are going to continue to play with Apex as the in-game leader. Like that will not change. I don't. I, this is the way that Apex has to play for him to be the in-game leader of the team. So I'm kind of just like, this is the way they are. Which, sure. yeah, I, think I know that, that feels a bit defeatist. But it's, yeah, it's also interesting to see like when Zaiwu is not having his typical tournament, like how much it changes for the team. You know, like <laughs> yeah, yeah, Spinks to some extent, but. Like most is I when it, and it's those things where, like, it's not something super glaring or obvious or anything like that. It's like a round where, you know, he would get not just one kill, but then the second and stay alive. Instead, he gets the one, and then as he's trying to get that second, he misses and gets killed. So it goes into like a, instead of a five v three and sort of containing the opponent into a four v four, and they get a little bit more space, right? Which is a completely different different round it's like some of those small details like some of the the frags that he usually picks up that he wasn't picking up that completely change the pace of the game to some extent right and 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 how it works out so yeah i guess it's 
you know, I, I know Duncan the world was we living up like that. That Cloud Nine was the first team that he played in the major that he beat in the major playoffs. That was like underneath outs- ranked eighteen or something like that. Yes, that something like yeah. that. You know, which I don't know. Crazy stat. Yeah, crazy, crazy stat. stat. Yeah, look, I they're not at, they're not in Chengdu, but I yeah. I think that that and and like I said, it's just this is the way that they're going to play the game. So they will be reliant on Zywu to be able to find his form for them to be able to to win trophies. That's that's what I think, uh, and that makes sense. That that should be the case, right? That yeah yeah. That, <laughs> so, um, I wanted to I wanted to discuss your thoughts on Astralis a little bit, gentlemen. Um, because I, I got a, I got a hard out in 22 minutes, so I wanted to talk a little bit about Astralis and what you guys have as expectations. Do you think this is just going to be a flop? It doesn't Ooh. have to be. Like you know, there's still skill on that team, right? They I'm play, mega high on. They, it. they play. I'm so high on. They it. play Monty, who has like Gizmi and Ryu, you know, in the lineup with Voro, Demka, and Krasnal. So it's not like they have a world beater on the on the other side of things. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I think it's just this whole device conversation, right? And the the point of it is, this is it for him now. Like he's just made the switch. Like he is turning into Kadia now, right? Which doesn't it makes have, you feel like which, he doesn't think he has big output anymore. Yeah, huh? but which no, which which doesn't mean that he isn't going to be good individually still to some extent at the very least. But he's making that switch from okay, now I am the opera in-game leader, right? I'm not just the opera anymore. Where the in-game, you know, both roles are very important. That's the problem. That's why there's only been, you know, only a few guys who were able to pull it off at a high level. So I think it's just something that we have to sort of accept that this is the the new normal. Like, I think even when they were, I haven't watched, but when they were on HLTV confirmed, right, in at the major, right, they were saying, like, yeah, he was saying like, "Yeah, this is it. Like, I've been wanting to do this for a while." Yeah, yeah. No, that's true. That's true. They had two boot camps as well, or maybe they're currently finishing up their second boot camp. Um, we were at least discussed as well, like the comfort of Stown and Yabby playing with the Orping in-game leader. He spoke about the positive. Somebody like Stare. Uh, we asked about Bro. He said he's more of a self-sufficient player. Isn't going to take a lot of resources away from the team. Um, so we we discussed a lot across the board. Obviously, Rugger as a coach as well. Um, so there, there was a lot of topics that we did discuss throughout that conversation. But I look at an event like this, and this is the moment for that team to make a bit of a mark, right? Whereas I look at the context of this group, because we can sit here and talk like the the general side of like how we feel about the team, but this is where they can seize the opportunity within this group. So they have FaZe who is going to come in feeling, you know, mentally probably a little bit dr- drudged unless them as a team can all pull themselves out. And that's going to, I think, be on an individual basis. Then you've got Mo- you've got uh, Namiga, Monty, Flyquest, and Wildcard. Those are the minnows, right? Swimming with the bigger fish of Cloud9 uh, and and VP. So if Astralis can take advantage of a weak phase or a mentally weak phase at the time, they can lock themselves in for the playoffs with just that victory, right? Because the upper bracket final is only going to determine whether they're in the semis or whether they're in the quarters. So just with a win over maybe a sleepy phase and a win over Monty in a best of one, which isn't a guarantee, right? Like yeah, the Monty played good team-based Counter-Strike and it's a best of one. But if Astralis can get through those two hurdles, they've immediately booked themselves a spot in the playoffs. And then you're looking at the teams overall in this group, an unproven liquid or a, or a liquid that's proven to be unreliable. Furia, let's not even get fucking started. Maus, who... Look, if we get to another stage match, they shit the bed again. There's another question, right? Because they're they're young. They've got a bunch of bedwetters, apparently. G2, um, who, you know, I I think, I hope G2 don't have the same haze mentally as what FaZe will be coming in because I think this is a tournament for G2 to try and try and pick up the victory for sure. They could steal this tournament. My my opinion of Astralis is like, Man, I, I don't know. It all it's all going to come down to this device thing, but I I'm I don't I don't know how much runway I give them to make this work because this Astralis team is built to win now. Like you just spent a couple million dollars to get Stown and Yabby in the team. And like and you well, I'm not giving them any runway, Jason. I'm saying this is it. The, Let's uh, fucking go. Yeah, but like what happens if they don't even make the playoffs here? What happens if they get upset by Monty and then you live in a world well, where they I have to wrong. fight through Cloud9 Virtus Pro potentially phase to make it into the playoffs? Like those aren't easy teams to beat even for, you know, even established teams. Like that like there's there's a world in which they don't make the playoffs at all. I'm I'm super It's more uh, likely they don't. Yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, I don't know. I don't I don't I don't, th- I don't think super highly of it. Just I think most of it is the circumstances around how it all kind of came to be for device to pick 
pick this up. But I mean, let's just say I do love the fact that you know, finally, literally the responsibility of this team having success is squarely on device's shoulders. And whether that be his individual level with the op or his calling as an in-game leader, it's all on him. He, 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 it's everything relies on him performing in his role and function within this team. He, he has complete control of this roster and unit, um, makes that tweet that he's not having fun playing the counter-strike they were playing at the RMR. Now he gets to play whatever fucking counter-strike that's going to make him excited and happy and ready to go. So it's all on him. And I, I would be surprised if he is one of those players that just steps into this role and is awesome at it immediately. So, I mean, th this is going to be a good first test and barometer, but I don't think I have a whole lot of sympathy for any kind of struggles or, um, or learning curve that he's going to have to go through. No one's asking for your sympathy, Jason. I just want you to get on board. Yeah, I think sure. I'm, 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 on, I'm on board that I'm interested to see how it goes. I'm always interested in, in seeing how it goes with these kinds of things, but I just, I'm not optimistic about it in any way. I, I think also like how Chad is like, this is their moment to see, and they've just made this massive change. <laughs> you know, I think it's actually exactly the opposite, but I think what I want to see is Stone and Yabi and how they perform in this roster. They need to perform. Because now sure. everything is set up for them to succeed, right? And if Kadian was the problem and, and you didn't want to play with him or he was holding you back or whatever, this is now where you need to thrive and you need to be the, 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 the carrying force of this team. Sure, Device has to contribute as an upper stair has been more than uh, carrying his weight, right, in, in the unfavorable roles that he, ha that he has. So now is the time for you to, to step up. I want to talk a little bit about Mouse, sure. because as we were talking, you know, like they turn out to group stage merchants or they just can't seem to do it in the playoffs. But you know what the reason for this is? It's like you, you saw that game against G2, man, and their approach was an inferno. Like, let's show them that we're not scared. You know, and, 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 and get in their <laughs> face or whatever. And then Exertion's way of doing that was walking through his own smoke at bottom of Banana as being the solo B player when there was 120 left on the clock because he heard players from... Uh, Falling back. How do you call it? Maxi uh, throwing nades, right? Like p pinning nades. And then he just died there for free, really. And they still ended up going A and getting the trades or whatever. But it's just a showing of... Man, what are you doing? And he had like a terrible series. He had a really bad series. And couldn't, yeah. you know, yeah. he, s some of the deaths were unfortunate, right? But he was clearly struggling. And I know that he was also saying, like, in some interview or when we were, I think we did the round table with them in Cato, Jason, or something like that. And mm -hmm. he was saying, like, yeah, and oh, in this playoff games, these experienced players, they try to bully you a little bit, right? Like, because they know you're young and inexperienced. So I try to be even a little bit more aggressive. Uh, then in groups, right, to show them, like, they can't do that to me or to us. And, you know, but I think he's, like, at this point, he's overthinking that shit, you know. Just fucking play CS, right? Because, sure, I see what you're because saying, Because that yeah. really put them in the hole um, early on that they could never recover from. And then even on Vertigo, right, sure, in, at the halftime, there was the whole thing with people rushing the stage, and it wasn't normal circumstances to, to play in. But they also got ran over by FaZe, Um in Katowice, completely pummeled, right? And that's after them being 3-0 at the major and also uh, being... 3-0 really, in the RMR. Yeah, be, yeah, and being really dominant in, in, in Kato. So they need to figure it out somehow because they're not the same team when it comes to that. And it is a little bit... You know, I think Brolan and Torji have been delivering like in those moments for the most time. So it's the rest of the guys that sort of... And I think for Jimmy, like, I don't think he necessarily has a problem with it. I think he had just a bad game against G2, but, you know, exertion, basically, and, and a little bit shooey. You know, you need to sort of just chill. You know, you don't need to be doing all this shit that you're talking about, right? Like, you can just relax a little bit more and just play your own game, right? Not Nothing more than playing your own game. That's it. Mm. Yeah, well, that, that's gonna that's a that's a struggle that they're gonna have to deal with, right? And you, you hope every time they get reps in, as soon as they have a breakthrough game where they can play the type of Counter Strike they're looking for on the stage, that's when mentally maybe that switch gets flicked, and then this team that we see being beasts within the group stage can carry that through to playoffs, and then these players can start making a name for themselves. They've had some experience on the stages of majors and stuff before, right? We've seen them have runs earlier when even when Dexter was in game leading the team, so. Shui going all the way to the final with even arguably a less equipped team than the one he has now. So there's there's definitely some mental hurdles. Sorry, Jason, where did you want to pivot? I wanted to pivot over to Cloud9 because I think there's a, an interesting conversation to be had 
there. Um, I thought you'd want to talk about liquid, Jason. I do, but I think liquid's going to be end. a fast conversation. It's, you know, like okay. there's really not a whole lot to go off of with liquid. Cloud9 just played at the major, made it to the quarterfinals, lost to Vitality zero two. I guess, I guess the question, the two, the two big points about Cloud9 that that have been focused on in, in recent months have been the lack of an opera and Exile's level slash performance. And at the major, Exile was a fucking stud again, just out of nowhere. He came up and and he was fucking beast mode, one point two seven rating. Um, but I guess the question would be. This was when we posed on the desk at the start of Cloud9's run was how far do they have to go to like, I mean, is there a world in which they have convinced they good anyone that they me, don't Jason. need an AWPer? They still need an AWPer, but they did better than I expected. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Better than I expected. And Exile might have kept his spot on the roster with this kind of a performance. Uh, it depends on who they can get as an AWPer, because if they can't get somebody of the correct caliber, then what's the point? Just stick with what you have. I mean, You've who, got experience in buckets and spades. Uh, let's say, in theory, they can't get Monacy, which is the player they, would, not like, for they would like the most. <laughs> so, I mean, the, the other name that's been floated around is the obvious one was Dexter, right? Like, but... That still hasn't transpired, and he isn't playing that'd for be, anyone else. That'd so be you such imagine, a gamble if they. So pick imagine, could you imagine Electronic yelling at Dexter? Oh, oh. that I'm <laughs> I'm excited. Let's make that happen. I'd love to see that happen. Actually, let's fucking go. <laughs> or you know, the the worst thing would be like getting someone as Deco too, who's like also super. He got released in no way. He's on Aurora. He's on Aurora. But didn't they yeah. just bench the team? No, that was Force. Oh, that's right. And Resalt joined Aurora. Yeah. That's right. So yeah, I, it's okay. So I don't know, you know, like he's obviously had people talked about personality issues and whatnot. I don't know if he's maybe matured a little bit. He definitely has talent, but that doesn't mean anything if you can't get your attitude in check, right? So there's some options like that which are not ideal. And then it comes down to how much do Cloud9 feel like they need to take that risk or are they just better off keeping the, the lineup that they have? I'm not sure. I think they're going to have a tough time lifting trophies with this lineup. Yes, I, I don't think that they will be the team to beat by any stretch of the imagination, but will they be like a gatekeeper of the playoffs and a team that we should see making playoffs? Yes. Uh, in the context of the group that they're in right now, I think that they... Well, they can capitalize, right? Because the conversation is merely between FaZe, Astralis, Cloud9, and VP, and I'm throwing Astralis in here for based off of what? based off True. of me thinking they'll be good because I, have a, I haven't seen anything to tell me feeling, they'll be good. I haven't heard anything about You're practice. putting faith it's in just, Lord and Savior Deva. Exactly. I'm making mm. like an Anders-type prediction. Sure. Like I'm just saying like, but you know, or it, so... It's also one yeah. of those things, Chad, if you were, you know, if it was like what you thought where blame was the biggest problem and he was holding him back and as they're, as they're like phrasing it now that his style didn't suit him as well. I mean, just, just getting rid of that should be you know a boost and maybe yes. they're maybe they'll be in that honeymoon phase hopefully that's what i want to see because they have all the all the pieces to be well besides an unproven four-time major winning newly turned in-game leader and <laughs> orpa um that's the that's the most unproven piece you know and obviously definitely not an influential piece by any stretch of the imagination um heroic i'm excited to see them in the server again 9z whatever tyloo whatever six-man roster lin vision if anyone's going to make the playoffs from group a that isn't g2 or heroic mouse. i guess li liquids in the conversation oh yeah mouse i i want lin vision there i want them to pop off i want them to it's not going to happen oh, maybe the, it could the chinese teams in Fury, china yeah. always do well and then you know you could have lin vision tyloo for a spot in the playoffs if they win their best of ones and those are like the second games of the day. So, you know, jet lag still maybe for European teams. Who knows? <laughs> oh, God. That's I like it. I like it. And Tyloo with the six-man roster, like bringing that back. I mean, that's a whole Changing him out half, at half time. I, I want to still great. touch on like we have Liquid versus Heroic playing each other, which which is probably the oh, yeah. best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the best, best game of the out of rounds. any in, initial game that we have. And I was disappointed in Heroic. I had them making the playoffs. After that overtime loss to Complexity, they just collapsed. You know, they got uh, owned by by VP. It was like I think thirteen six in the best of one, and then they didn't even put up a fight. Who was their last game against? Pain. Pain. Yeah, shit. They got eliminated two zero by Pain thirteen six thirteen nine. Yeah, and they the got thirteen nine game Mirage. was the thirteen nine was yeah where they started zero and twelve. Uh, zero T side rounds, which I don't know what happened to them. That that was definitely not what I expected. Nerds didn't have a good series or a good tournament. Again, something that 
you didn't expect because he's a guy who just kind of plays the same really like doesn't seem to be affected by these things so yeah i'm hoping they bounce back here it's still like a pretty young team like a a new roster so i don't think they'll be as heartbroken in some of these other lineups um that that we talked about like phase etc i had and such, then liquid had, oh yeah go on yeah and i just wanted to say and then liquid on the other side um obviously not even making the major that was a, a disaster for them but this is where we get to see a little bit what they're made of you know as a unit right like because that's a a, a tough thing that you need to battle um through and if they are serious about this particular project like the, these five players then they need to be able to bounce back here and we've had you know when when g2 failed uh, for rio they came back stronger not immediately not the first tournament but the second tournament I mean, so let's I actually, see if liquid I, can do the same i actually think it's super super important tournament for liquid just because i mean this if you're if you're thinking you want to get that major disaster not even qualifying behind you and change the conversation and vibes around this team and and probably within the team as well a good performance here goes a long way to to start allowing people and fans and us to forget about not qualifying for the major but and start no to frame one, no that one a cares bit about the good scenario jason i want to hear your thoughts if, if it's a disaster liquid in Chengdu, lose to heroic and then lose to 9z and are eliminated is that the end of this roster yeah you make a change immediately i would i would i would i would probably look at first and foremost dropping yakinder um and and replacing him in the roster um, mm. and seeing, seeing where you can go, I would probably, me personally, I would hope they would stay in the Americas and look towards a North American player, like a Brazilian or, or Central America. Um, but obviously it's, it's the lay of the land after the major teams are making roster changes. Um, maybe you have an opportunity to seal someone who you think is a better fit and a little bit uh, stronger performing, uh, from a European squad. And that's possible because you still keep your America slot. Um, but I think after this, if it, if it doesn't work, um, outside of there being any kind of catastrophe with like Katie and and not being what they expected, I think you look at your kinder and you take him out of the roster and, and put someone else in. Just, just, I mean, when you think about it, like even without him as an in-game leader, like, you know, this, this, this kind of team since he's joined outside of maybe the first three or four months where there was like a really, really positive signs of growth and adaptation within the team, it's always felt like they've been on different pages ever since he's been in this roster out, out of those first, those first few months. Um, and I don't, I don't, I wouldn't lay all of that on his feet. I think he came into tough circumstances in a tough team that I would, that I would have some insight into. Um, and, but I mean, it's done nothing to fix any of those issues since then. Um, so I think, I think that's the direction I go if I'm liquid. Yeah, good talk. Is that coming from, no, I thought, so. I thought I heard something from Chad. A little bit of music? Was he listening yeah, to some fun Fuck, music? it's not working. I'm, you, the stream to... will be able to hear it, but you guys can't hear it. I was trying to do this gag <laughs> where the phone was ringing and I was going to be like, hello? JKS, Justin, we're praying on the downfall of liquid in Chengdu. Pack your bags. You're going to America. <laughs> but I couldn't pull off the gag because it wouldn't play loud enough on TeamSpeak. So now people are going to hear multiple different phone sounds through the recording while Jason's talking. Okay. And it's not going to make any sense because I couldn't pull off the gag. Well, you just explained it. It would have been a great gag if you could have pulled it off. Down the road. Fuck. Down the road. That'll be beautiful. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I, uh, I don't know. It's such a weird, weird place for this team. And I, and I think a lot of it, I, I don't even know. I don't even know what they've been doing i don't think they were boot camping during the major i don't think I, I don't know how much they've i honestly i have no insight into how much they were practicing i haven't i haven't kept tabs on them throughout the major but maybe well they're... twist has been in malta because i can tell from the jimmy goes to sure um <laughs> maybe maybe skulls and uh zeus were at the practice facility naf might have been in, in europe hanging out with uh, his girlfriend so i mean maybe yeah the, maybe they've been playing and practicing for the past week and getting taken some advantage of some of the major teams that are in town and everything but you know i don't let, let's see what they've got let's see what this team looks like because i mean it, it looked it looked really really disorganized back at the rmr and not even being able to qualify over north american and brazilian teams is even even with the two loss factor of the of the swiss system only being two two game eliminations it's still pretty embarrassing i think for for a team of this experience and caliber i think it's lulquid isn't that the, the that, what is, they say in Twitch that chat? is the meme name the lulquid yeah yeah that's what they're saying in twitch chat gentlemen three minutes yeah, let's end it with uh, Chad. Uh, what do we expect uh, from FlyQuest this tournament? We have spoke about FlyQuest yesterday. We don't need to talk about FlyQuest right. again. Fuck uh, FlyQuest. Uh, <laughs> um, Stanislaw is back. 
We'll be at the Is same he? place uh, again, me and That's him. true, that's true. Yeah, he, he's back. Uh, he's got Mottam, uh, JBA, Sonic, and Slight. Is his roster? Sure, they drew, uh, they drew on the short end of the dick there with Virtus Pro right at the right at the <laughs> opening gate. Don't they have a stand-in for the event though? Yeah, they have think... a Chinese player, or I mean, yeah. he has a Chinese player. Call me Jesus or something. Like. Yeah, so that that's that's going to be a curious uh, me, little so. scenario. Yeah, so, that's going to be a curious little scenario. And they Doesn't just, they just found out a week ago. I imagine that they'd be that they'd be going right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because they yeah. replaced. So a great opportunity for them. Yeah. You know. Well, same with Liquid, though. To and, be honest with you. And also Nine Z, right? I mean, they qualified for this tournament and Dallas, and they couldn't make the. But I couldn't think of a worse team, Yanko, that I'd want to play in a best of one opener VP as as like an underdog team, like hoping to swing and play hey, with man. momentum. It's like fuck. Trust in These guys have the brakes on. Trust in Stanislaw to game plan against VP style. You know, VP is going to underestimate them. They have Horvy as the coach too. Sonic is there yeah. <laughs> still, still like you know finishing college, doing exams, and then playing CS. Right, the underdog, the underdog team. Respect underdog, Chad. You have to. How how can you? Uh, the match times for everybody. If you're going to be tuning in, it's going to be starting on Monday. Uh, we're going to do media day on. We land Saturday. We do media day Sunday. Tournament goes Wednesday, uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Day off Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Playoffs, top sixteen playoff. Uh, so that means two quarterfinals. Yes, I know it's counterintuitive. It makes no sense. Two semifinals and a grand final uh, with a show match, I do believe. My one wish, I have one wish, is that come 2025, ESL stop doing six-team playoff brackets. Yeah. Six-team, not 16, six-team. Give me the full quarterfinal experience. Yo. Yes, please. One question slash statement. If like we're not in the arena or anything like that, you know, it's going to be Chinese. Does that mean... We don't have to do the show match. Can it be the Chinese uh, talent doing I it? I believe and- Alex and I are casting the show match. So I don't know if you have to do anything show match related, but Alex and I will do something show match related. Um, I was talking to the producer about what map they were potentially going to pick for it to try and make it a little bit more entertaining from that side of things. Um, but I, yeah, we won't be. I don't think our voices will be in the arena. I think you're bang on. Yeah. All right. Nice. All right. All right, All right. Well, see everybody. Uh, Episode eighty six point five done and dusted. Yeah, you boys Ooh. enjoy China. Um, yeah, that's all. The Chengdu's and Chengdon'ts yeah. of China. Beautiful. Goodbye. <laughs>